Hi, and welcome to Whiteboard Math. Today we're going to be discussing the basics of factoring. The first question on your mind is probably, what is factoring? Factoring is expressing a number as a product of its divisors without any remainder. In simpler terms, it essentially means multiplication. For example, what if you had to find the factors of the number 12? Essentially, what you need to do is figure out what numbers will multiply together to give you an answer of 12. So let's think. We know that 3 and 4 can be multiplied together to give you 12. Therefore, 3 and 4 are factors of 12. Can we think of any more? Sure. How about 2 and 6? Those work as well. And we also can't forget about 1 and 12. They seem like easy answers, but a lot of people forget about them and they'll be important later on. When you have to factor when variables like x are involved, you're essentially going to be working backwards in a multiplication, just like the example that we did. Here's an example of a multiplication question you might be given. Expand 4 times x plus 5. With this question, we need to remember the distributive property, which is where we take the outside term and we need to multiply it with every single term inside the bracket. That means that we're going to be multiplying 4 times x and we're going to be adding it with 4 times 5. If we carry out this multiplication, we'll be left with 4x plus 20. In a factoring question, we're going to be starting with this answer, and we're going to be trying to work backwards to get to the original question. So for our first factoring example, we're going to be using the greatest common factor method. Finding a greatest common factor means looking at all of the terms in your question and dividing them all by the highest number possible. Let's take a look at the same example but work backwards. Factor 4x plus 20. Here we need to look at the factors of each number. So let's look at the first term here, 4x. We'll ignore the x for now. So let's think of factors of 4. We know that 4 can be factored into 2 times 2. It also can be factored into 1 times 4. Let's take a look at 20 now. You can get an answer of 20 by multiplying together 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and 4 times 5. Now with this list of numbers, we can put them all in order to figure out what our greatest common factor is. So for 4, we have the numbers 1, 2, and 4 as factors. For 20, we have the numbers 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. So looking at this list of numbers, 5, 10, and 20 are not common to both of these sets. And we have 1 and 2 that are common, but overall 4 is the highest factor out of all of these factors. So 4 will be the common factor that we'll be using. So let's go back to this original question, 4x plus 20. We know that our common factor is going to be 4. So we want to divide each term by 4. Keep in mind we're working backwards to get to the multiplication, so that's why we're dividing. So here, dividing 4x by 4, what will that give us? That'll give us an answer of just x. And what about here? 20 divided by 4, that gives us an answer of 5. Since we're dividing a positive 20, we'll keep this as a positive sign. However, we need to remember back to our factoring definition, we can't just reduce the equation by a factor of 4 because then you won't have the same question that you started out with. So to solve this problem, we put the x plus 5 in brackets and keep that factor of 4 on the outside. Remember the similarities between this question and the original multiplication question that we were given. They're exactly the same. Now let's take a look at this second example. Factor 3x minus 12. We'll be factoring this in the exact same way by looking for something in common that can be divided off. So let's see here. 3 can only be divided by 1 and 3, so let's check if 12 can be divided by either of these numbers. It can be divided by 1, but there really is no point to do that, so instead we'll be dividing 12 by 3. So let's follow the same procedure. So we divide the first term by 3 as well as the second term. 3x divided by 3, that will give us just x. And negative 12, by looking at that negative sign, divided by 3, that will give us negative 4. And remember, we need to include the 3 in front of the brackets to make it a multiplication question. 
And this is our final answer. Sometimes you'll encounter questions where more exponents are involved. So let's take a look at another multiplication question to get a hang of this before we start factoring. So this example is x multiplied with x plus 3. Again, we're going to be using the distributive property, multiplying the outside term into the brackets. But this time we need to consider the exponent laws. So here we have x with an imaginary exponent of 1 and another imaginary exponent of 1 over here as well on this x. So when we multiply, we're going to be adding exponents. So here we have a single x plus a single x. That will give us x to the power of 2. And when we take that x to the power of 1 and multiply it with positive 3, we're going to get 3x. And that one also is to the power of 1, but we don't need to include that. We're going to be using this exact same technique to handle a factoring question. Here's a factoring question involving exponents of x. So first, let's just look at the numbers. Let's find factors of 6. So we know that we can multiply 1 and 6, as well as 2 and 3. How about 15? To get 15, we can multiply 1 and 15, as well as 3 and 5. We can see that 3 is the greatest common factor among these numbers. Now let's take a look at the variables. Here we have an x squared. So that means you're multiplying x times x. For the 15x, this is just a single power of x. So that means that x to the power of 1 is the greatest common factor for these two terms. One way to think of it is the lowest power of x that is in common between your terms. So for this question, we said that our greatest common factor was 3x. So let's just keep that in mind. This is what we're going to be dividing each term by. So let's move forward. Let's do the coefficients first. So we have 6 divided by 3. That will give us 2. And we have x squared divided by x. Remember back to our exponent laws. When we're dividing, we want to subtract exponents. So that means we're going to subtract 2 minus 1. And that'll give us just a single power of x. In the second term here, we have 15x divided by 3x. We know that positive 15 divided by 3 is 5. And the x on the top and the x on the bottom are going to cancel out because both of those have an exponent of 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And anything to the exponent of 0 is just 1. So that will give us that answer of 5. So remember, to finish this off, we need to include that 3x outside the bracket. And that is our final product, 3x multiplied by 2x plus 5. So this concludes our first lesson on factoring, specifically the greatest common factor method. Remember, when you're looking for a greatest common factor, try and find the biggest number that can be divided from all of the terms in your question. If this video helped you out, be sure to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you soon with some more math videos.